Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Shaws. Today we have our first story from Norway, and this is a tale that has been told before. Like many of the most recent ones, this is not the first time that you've heard this, from me at least. But I really like the execution on this version of the three magical items that are given to a young lad who undertakes a journey. This is The Lad Who Went to the North Wind. Once upon a time, there was an old widow who had one son, and she was poorly and weak. Her son had to go up into the safe to fetch meal for cooking. But when he got outside the safe and was just going down the steps, there came the north wind puffing and blowing, caught up the meal, and so away with it through the air. Then the lad went back into the safe for more, but when he came out again on the steps, if the north wind didn't come again and carry off the meal with a puff. And more than that, he did so the third time. At this, The lad got very angry, and as he thought it hard that the north wind should behave so, he thought he'd just look him up and ask him to give him his meal. So off he went, but the way was long and he walked and walked, but at last he came to the north wind's house. Good day, said the lad, and thank you for coming to see us yesterday. Good day, answered the north wind, for his voice was loud and gruff. And thanks for coming to see me. What do you want? Oh, answered the lad, I only wish to ask you to be so good as to let me have back that meal you took from me on the safe steps, for we haven't much to live on, and if you're going to go on snapping up the morsel we have, there'll be nothing for it but to starve. I haven't your meal, said the north wind. But if you're in such need, I'll give you a cloth which will get you everything you want if only you say cloth, spread yourself, and serve up all kinds of good dishes. With this, the lad was well content. But, as the way was so long he couldn't get home in one day, so he turned into an inn on the way, and when they were going to sit down to supper he laid the cloth on a table which stood in the corner and said, Cloth! Spread yourself and serve up all kinds of good dishes. He had scarce said so before the cloth did as it was bid, and all who stood by thought it was a fine thing, but most of all, the landlady. So, when all were fast asleep at dead of night, she took the lad's cloth and put another in its stead, just like the one he had got from the north wind, but which couldn't serve so much as a bit of dry bread. So when the lad awoke, he took his cloth and went off with it, and that day he got home to his mother. Now, said he, I've been to the north wind's house, and a good fellow he is, for he gave me this cloth, and when I only say it to it, cloth, spread yourself, and serve up all kinds of good dishes. I get any sort of food I please. All very true, I dare say, said his mother. But seeing is believing, and I shan't believe it till I see it. So the lad made haste, drew out a table, laid the cloth on it, and said, Cloth, spread yourself, and serve up all kinds of good dishes. But never a bit of dry bread did the cloth serve up. Well, said the lad, there is no help for it but to go to the north wind again. And away he went. So he came to where the north wind lived late in the afternoon. Good evening, said the lad. Good evening, said the north wind. I want my rights for that meal of ours which you took, said the lad. For as for that cloth I got, it isn't worth a penny. I've got no meal, said the north wind. But yonder you have a ram which coins nothing but golden ducats as soon as you say to it, Ram, ram, make money. So the lad thought this was a fine thing. But as it was too far to get home that day, he turned in for the night to the same inn where he had slept before. 
Before he called for anything, he tried the truth of what the north wind had said of the ram, and found it all right, but when the landlord saw that, for he thought it was a famous ram, and when the lad had fallen asleep, he took another which couldn't coin gold ducats and changed the two. Next morning off went the lad, and when he got home to his mother he said, After all, the north wind is a jolly fellow, for he has given me a ram, which can coin golden ducats if only I say, Ram, ram, make money. All very true, I dare say, said his mother, but I shan't believe any such stuff until I see the ducats made. Ram, ram, make money, said the lad. But if the ram made anything, it wasn't money. So the lad went back again to the north wind and blew him up, and said the ram was worth nothing, and he must have his rights for the meal. Well, said the north wind, I've nothing else to give you but that old stick in the corner yonder, but it's a stick of that kind that if you say, Stick, stick, lay on, it lays on until you say, Stick, stick, now stop. So, as the way was long, the lad turned in this night too, to the landlord, but as he could pretty well guess how things stood as to the cloth and the ram, he laid down at once on the bench and began to snore as if he were asleep. Now the landlord, who easily saw that the stick must be worth something, hunted up one which was like it. But when he heard the lad snore, and was going to change the two, but just, just as the landlord was about to take it, the lad bawled out, Stick! Stick lay on! So the stick began to beat the landlord, till he jumped over chairs and tables and benches and yelled and roared. Oh my, oh my, bid the stick be still, else it will beat me to death, and you shall have back both your cloth and your ram. When the lad thought the landlord had got enough, he said, Stick, stick, now stop. Then he took the cloth and put it into his pocket, and went home with the stick in his hand, leading the ram by a cord round its horns. And so he got the rights for the meal he had lost. And that is the lad who went to the north wind. And like I said, this is a story that we've heard many times before with the cloth that brings food, the animal who gives gold, and the stick which really just beats people up. And I like this story. I like the way that... I just like the way that it's presented. It's done in a very, very beautiful manner. And also, it brings to us that thought to not trust one's landlord or landlady. They're always trying something, aren't they? This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you'd like to support the podcast, you can head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject, where for as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to every story told and help support the podcast. This week, I'd like to thank Becky McPherson for joining the role of supporters of the Folktale Project. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>